Stigand was an Anglo-Saxon churchman in pre-Norman conquest England who became Archbishop of Canterbury. His birth date is unknown, but by 1020 he was serving as a royal chaplain and advisor. He was named Bishop of Elmham in 1043, and was later Bishop of Winchester and Archbishop of Canterbury. Stigand was as an advisor to several members of the Anglo-Saxon and Norman-English royal dynasties, serving six successive kings. Excommunicated by several popes for his pluralism in holding the two sees, or bishoprics, of Winchester and Canterbury concurrently, he was finally deposed in 1070, and his estates and personal wealth were confiscated by William the Conqueror. Stigand was imprisoned at Winchester, where he died without regaining his liberty. Stigand served King Cnut as a chaplain at a royal foundation at Ashingdon in 1020, and as an advisor then and later. He continued in his role of advisor during the reigns of Cnut's sons, Harold Harefoot and Harthicknut. When Cnut's stepson Edward the Confessor succeeded Harthicknut, Stigand in all probability became England's main administrator. Monastic writers of the time accused Stigand of extorting money and lands from the church, and by 1066 the only estates richer than Stigand's were the royal estates and those of Harold Godwinson. In 1043 Edward appointed Stigand to the See of Elmham. Four years later he was appointed to the See of Winchester, and then in 1052 to the Archdiocese of Canterbury which Stigand held jointly with that of Winchester. Five successive popes, including Nicholas II and Alexander II, excommunicated Stigand for holding both Winchester and Canterbury. Stigand was present at the deathbed of King Edward and at the coronation of Harold Godwinson as King of England in 1066. After Harold's death, Stigand submitted to William the Conqueror. On Christmas Day 1066 Eildred, the Archbishop of York, crowned William King of England. Stigand's excommunication meant that he could only assist at the coronation. Despite growing pressure for his deposition, Stigand continued to attend the royal court and to consecrate bishops until in 1070 he was deposed by papal legates and imprisoned at Winchester. His intransigence towards the papacy was used as propaganda by Norman advocates of the view that the English church was backward and needed reform. Early life Neither the year nor the date of Stigand's birth is known. He was born in East Anglia, possibly in Norwich, to an apparently prosperous family of mixed English and Scandinavian ancestry as is shown by the fact that Stigand's name was Norse but his brother's was English. His brother Ethelmer, also a cleric, later succeeded Stigand as Bishop of Elmham. His sister held land in Norwich, but her given name is unrecorded. Stigand first appears in the historical record in 1020 as a royal chaplain to King Cnut of England. In that year he was appointed to Cnut's church at Ashingdon, or Asandons, which was dedicated by the reforming Bishop Wolfstan of York. Little is known of Stigand's life during Cnut's reign, but he must have had a place at the royal court, as he witnessed occasional charters. Following Cnut's death Stigand successively served Cnut's sons, Harold Harefoot and Harthicknut. After Harthicknut died Stigand became an advisor to Emma of Normandy. Cnut's widow and the mother of Harthicknut and his successor and Edward the Confessor, he may have been Emma's chaplain, and it is possible that Stigand was already one of her advisors while Cnut was alive, and that he owed his position at Ashingdon to Emma's influence and favour, because little is known of Stigand's activities before his appointment as a bishop. It is difficult to determine to whom he owed his position, Bishop of Elmham and Winchester. Stigand was appointed to the See of Elmham shortly after Edward the Confessor's coronation on the 3rd of April 1043, probably on Emma's advice. This was the first episcopal appointment of Edward's reign. The Diocese of Elmham covered East Anglia in eastern England, and was one of the poorer episcopal sees at that time. He was consecrated bishop in 1043, but later that year Edward deposed Stigand and deprived him of his wealth. During the next year, however, Edward returned Stigand to office. 
The reasons for the deposition are unknown, but it was probably connected to the simultaneous fall from power of the Dowager Queen, Emma. Some sources state that Emma had invited King Magnus I of Norway, a rival claimant to the English throne, to invade England and had offered her personal wealth to aid Magnus. Some suspected that Stigand had urged Emma to support Magnus, and claimed that his deposition was because of this. Contributing factors in Emma and Stigand's fall included Emma's wealth, and dislike of her political influence, which was linked to the reign of the unpopular Harthic Knut. By 1046, Stigand had begun to witness charters of Edward the Confessor, showing that he was once again in royal favour. In 1047, Stigand was translated to the See of Winchester, but he retained Elmham until 1052. He may have owed the promotion to Earl Godwin of Wessex, the father-in-law of King Edward, although that is disputed by some historians. Emma, who had retired to Winchester after regaining Edward's favour, may also have influenced the appointment, either alone or in concert with Godwin. After his appointment to Winchester, Stigand was a witness to all the surviving charters of King Edward during the period 1047 to 1052. Some historians, such as Frank Barlow and Emma Mason, state that Stigand supported Earl Godwin in his quarrel with Edward the Confessor in 1051 to 1052. Others, including Ian Walker, hold that he was neutral. Stigand, whether or not he was a supporter of God, Wins, did not go into exile with the Earl. The quarrel started over a fight between Eustace of Boulogne, brother-in-law of the king, and men of the town of Dover. The king ordered Godwin to punish the town, and the Earl refused. Continued pressure from Edward undermined Godwin's position, and the Earl and his family fled England in 1051. The Earl returned in 1052 with a substantial armed force but eventually reached a peaceful accord with the King. Some medieval sources state that Stigand took part in the negotiations that reached a peace between the King and his Earl. The Canterbury Manuscript of the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle calls Stigand the King's chaplain and advisor during the negotiations. Archbishop of Canterbury Appointment to Canterbury and issues with the papacy The Archbishopric of Canterbury became drawn into the conflict between Edward and Godwin. Pope Leo IX was beginning a reform movement later known as the Gregorian Reform. Leo first focused on improving the clergy and prohibiting simony, the buying and selling of clerical and ecclesiastical offices. In 1049 Leo IX publicly pronounced that he would take more interest in English church matters and would investigate episcopal candidates more, strictly before confirming them. When Archbishop Ed Sy of Canterbury died in 1051, the monks of the cathedral chapter elected Ethelric, a relative of Earl Godwin's, as Archbishop. King Edward opposed the election and instead appointed Robert of Dumages, who was Norman and already Bishop of London. Besides furthering Edward's quarrel with Godwin, the appointment signalled that there were limits to Edward's willingness to compromise on ecclesiastical reform. Although not known as a reformer before his appointment, Robert returned in 1051 from Rome, where he had gone to be confirmed by the papacy and opposed the king's choice for Bishop of London on the grounds that the candidate was not suitable. Robert's attempts to recover church property that had been appropriated by Earl Godwin contributed to the quarrel between the Earl and the king. When Godwin returned to England in 1052 Robert was outlawed and exiled, following which King Edward appointed Stigand to the archbishopric. The appointment was either a reward from Godwin for Stigand's support during the conflict with Edward or a reward from King Edward for successfully negotiating a peaceful conclusion to the crisis in 1052. Stigand was the first non-monk to be appointed to either English archbishopric since before the days of Dunstan. The papacy refused to recognize Stigand's elevation, as Robert was still alive and had not been deprived of office by a pope. Robert of Jumiges appealed to Leo IX, who summoned Stigand to Rome. When Stigand did not appear, he was excommunicated. 
Historian Nicholas Brooks holds the view that Stigand was not excommunicated at this time, but rather was ordered to refrain from any archiepiscopal functions, such as the consecration of bishops. He argues that in 1062 papal legates sat in council with Stigand, something they would not have done had he been excommunicated. The legates did nothing to alter Stigand's position either, although one of the legates later helped oppose Stigand in 1070. However Pope Leo IX and his successors, Victor II and Stephen IX, continued to regard Stigand as uncanonically elected. Stigand did not travel to Rome to receive a pallium, the band worn around the neck that is the symbol of an archbishop's authority, from the Pope. Traveling to Rome for the pallium had become a custom, practiced by a number of his predecessors. Instead, some medieval chroniclers state that he used Robert of Jumige's pallium. It is not known if Stigand even petitioned the papacy for a pallium soon after his appointment. Owing to the reform movement, Stigand probably knew the request would be unsuccessful. In 1058 Antipope Benedict X, who opposed much of the reform movement, gave Stigand a pallium. However, Benedict was deposed in the following year. The reforming party declared Benedict an antipope and nullified all his acts, including Stigand's pallium grant. The exact circumstances that led to Benedict granting a pallium are unknown, whether it was at Stigand's request or was given without prompting. After his translation to Canterbury, Stigand released Elmham to his brother Ethelmer, but retained the bishopric of Winchester. Canterbury and Winchester were the two richest sees in England, and while precedent allowed the holding of a rich see along with a poor one, there was no precedent for holding two rich sees concurrently. He may have retained Winchester out of avarice, or his hold on Canterbury may not have been secure. Besides these, he held the Abbey of Gloucester and the Abbey of Ely and perhaps other abbeys also. Whatever his reasons, the retention of Winchester made Stigand a pluralist the holder of more than one benefice at the same time. This was a practice that was targeted for elimination by the growing reform movement in the Church. Five successive popes excommunicated Stigand for holding both Winchester and Canterbury at the same time. It has been suggested by the historian Emma Mason that Edward refused to remove Stigand because this would have undermined the royal prerogative to appoint bishops and archbishops without papal input. Further hurting Stigand's position, Pope Nicholas II in 1061 declared pluralism to be uncanonical unless approved by the Pope. Stigand was later accused of simony by monastic chroniclers, but all such accusations date to after 1066, and are thus suspect owing to the post-conquest desire to vilify the English Church as corrupt and backward. The medieval chronicler William of Poitiers also claimed that in 1052 Stigand agreed that William of Normandy, the future William the Conqueror, should succeed King Edward. This claim was used as propaganda after the conquest, but according to the historian David Bates, among others, it is unlikely to be true. The position of Stigand as head of the church in England was used to good effect by the Normans in the propaganda before during and after the conquest. Ecclesiastical affairs The Diocese of York took advantage of Stigand's difficulties with the papacy and encroached on the suffragans, or bishops owing obedience to an archbishop, normally subject to Canterbury. York had long been held in common with Worcester, but during the period when Stigand was excommunicated, the See of York also claimed oversight over the sees of Lichfield and Dorchester. In 1062, however, papal legates of Alexander II came to England. They did not depose Stigand, and even consulted with him and treated him as archbishop. He was allowed to attend the council they held and was an active participant with the legates in the business of the council. Many of the bishops in England did not want to be consecrated by Stigand. Both Gizzer of Wells and Walter of Hereford travelled to Rome to be consecrated by the Pope in 1061, rather than be consecrated by Stigand. 
during the brief period that he held a legitimate pallium. However, Stigand did consecrate Ethelric of Selsey and Seaward of Rochester. Abbots of monasteries, however, came to Stigand for consecration throughout his time as archbishop. These included not only abbots from monastic houses inside his province, such as Ethel Siger as abbot of St. Augustine's Abbey in Canterbury, but also Baldwin as abbot of Bury St. Edmunds and Thurstan as abbot of Ely. After the Norman conquest, Stigand was accused of selling the office of abbot, but no abbot was deposed for buying the office, so the charge is suspect. Stigand was probably the most lavish clerical donor of his period, when great men gave to churches on an unprecedented scale. He was a benefactor to the Abbey of Ely, and gave large gold or silver crucifixes to Ely, St. Augustine's Abbey in Canterbury, Bury St. Edmund's Abbey, and to his cathedral church at Winchester, the crucifixes given to Ely. Bury and Winchester all appear to have had about life-size figures of Christ with matching figures of the Virgin and John the Evangelist, as is recorded in the monastic histories, and were probably permanently mounted over the altar or elsewhere. These would have been made with thin sheets of precious metal over a wooden core. No comparably early rude crosses with the side figures of Mary and John seem to survive. Though we have large painted wood and crucifixes like the German Gero Cross of around 980, and the Volto Santo of Luca which is known to have inspired Lee Ofstan, abbot of Berry to create a similar figure, perhaps covered in precious metal, on his return from a visit to Rome. To Ely he gave gold and silver vessels for the altar and a chasuble embroidered in gold, of such inestimable workmanship and worth that none in the kingdom is considered richer or more valuable. Although it does not appear that Stigand ever travelled to Rome, there are indications that Stigand did go on pilgrimage. A 12th century life of St. Willie Broad, written at the Abbey of Ecknesh in what is now Luxembourg, records that, to this place also came Stigand, the eminent archbishop of the English. In the work, Stigand is recorded as giving rich gifts to the abbey as well as relics of saints. Advisor to the king during Edward's reign, Stigand was an influential advisor at court and used his position to increase his own wealth as well as that of his friends and family. Contemporary valuations of the lands he controlled at the death of King Edward, as listed in Doomsday Book, come to an annual income of about £2,500. There is little evidence, however, that he enriched either Canterbury or Winchester. He also appointed his followers to sees within his diocese in 1058, having Seward named Bishop of Rochester and Ethelric installed as Bishop of Selsey. Between his holding of two sees and the appointment of his men to other sees in the southeast of England, Stigand was an important figure in defending the coastline against invasion. Stigand may have been in charge of the royal administration. He may also have been behind the effort to locate Edward the Atheling and his brother Edmund after 1052, possibly to secure a more acceptable heir to King Edward. His land holdings were spread across ten counties, and in some of those counties, his lands were larger than the king's holdings. Although Norman propagandists claimed that as early as 1051 or 1052 King Edward promised the throne of England to Duke William of Normandy, who later became King William the Conqueror, there is little contemporary evidence of such a promise from non-Norman sources. By 1053, Edward probably realised that he would not have a son from his marriage, and he and his advisers began to search for an heir. Edward the Atheling, the son of King Edmund Ironside, had been exiled from England in 1017, after his father's death. Although Eildred the Bishop of Worcester went to the continent in search of Edward the Exile, Ian Walker, the biographer of King Harold Godwinson, feels that Stigand was behind the effort. In the end, although Edward did return to England, he died soon after his return, leaving a young son Edgar the Ethling.